Hi folks, HR Funk here. One of the more difficult things when it comes to presenting information in this medium is trying to balance the amount of data I can convey before the entire presentation starts to feel like a lecture from a math professor. That's especially true when the subject of the presentation is analytical in nature, which is what this video is going to be. So if you're someone who likes firearms videos that center around high volume of fire and blowing things to bits, you might as well just go ahead and click out now because you're probably not going to enjoy this presentation. But if you're someone who is interested in the use of handgun optics, particularly when those handgun optics are mounted on defensive handguns, stick around because you might find something here that's going to be informative. Now this is probably going to be an instructor level video. So again, if that's just not your bag, you might want to click out, but even you instructors out there, I have no idea how long this video is going to run as I stand here at the very beginning, but it is going to run for a while. I'm confident of that because I have a lot of information to convey. So any of you watching might want to break this up into bite-sized portions and watch it over a period of time. In any case, here we go. Let's take a look at whether or not different micro red dot handgun reticles have a bearing on practical accuracy and the speed at which those accurate shots can be placed on your target. So for a little bit of history on today's video before we dive into the subject matter, this started several weeks ago when I produced a video where I was comparing a full-size handgun to a compact version of that same handgun and doing a comparison of the practical accuracy that was achievable with both of those handguns. And at the end of the video, if you saw it, you remember that I was pondering the notion of speed versus accuracy because the full-size handgun in that video had a micro red dot optic with a 32 minute of angle circle around a two minute of angle dot and it allowed me to get shots on target very quickly, but the accuracy ended up being less than I was able to achieve with the compact version of that handgun, which only had a two minute of angle dot. But the handgun with the two minute of angle dot, the compact handgun, required more time for me to properly align the dot on my target and be able to squeeze off my shots. So as I was mulling all this over, <laughs> Out of pure coincidence, I received from Optics Planet a micro red dot optic for a handgun that has multiple reticle options that are available. And you may have seen my review of this from a week or so ago. This is the Hollow Sun Competition model. And this model has a total of eight different reticle options. And they are in the order of progression through the optic, a two minute of angle dot, then there is a eight minute of angle circle with no dot, then a 20 minute of angle circle with no dot, a 32 minute of angle circle with no dot, then the eight minute of angle circle with the two minute of angle dot in the middle, the 20 minute of angle circle with the two minute of angle dot in the middle, the 32 minute of angle circle with the two minute of angle dot in the middle, and finally there is the 32 minute of angle circle surrounding the eight minute of angle circle surrounding the two minute of angle dot. So many, many different reticle options are available with this one optic. And based on my thinking that I was already doing from that previous video, I thought this will make it easy to eliminate a lot of variables that would occur if I was using different handguns with different optics and different reticles because with this one optic, I can take a look at the performance of reticles of all those different sizes from the same handgun on the same drills with the same shooter, obviously, and see what kind of difference, if any, there is when the only thing that changes throughout the course of the exercise is the size and style of the reticle. So this was kind of a big undertaking. I knew from the outset it was going to take a lot of time and effort to be able to first shoot my way through all the drills and then crunch the numbers and see what I was able to determine in the end. I decided that for my reticles that I would use for this test, I was not going to use the circle only versions. Now, I think those reticles might be very good, especially if they're mounted on a shotgun. If you have the circle that approximates about 
what your shot pattern would be at a certain distance. I think that could be very quick with a shotgun to come up, have that circle superimposed, and fire off your shot and be relatively certain that all of the pellets in your pattern were going to strike somewhere inside that circle. For defensive handgun use, however, that struck me as a little bit less precise than I would prefer. I like having that dot in the center and then the larger and larger circles surrounding that dot to make it faster and faster to find the dot in the lens of the optic. So I settled on a drill where I would use four different reticles with the Holosun Competition Optic. They are the two minute of angle dot all alone, the two minute of angle dot surrounded by the eight minute of angle circle, the two minute of angle dot surrounded by the 20 minute of angle circle, and the two minute of angle dot surrounded by the 32 minute of angle circle. By the way, one of the things I learned about this optic out at the range is when you change from reticle to reticle, you have to press the minus button on the side of the optic for three seconds and then wait for the reticle to automatically change. And it only progresses one way. And it was the progression that I explained a couple of minutes ago when I was first talking about the different styles of reticles in this optic. So what I would end up having to do is cycle my way through seven of the eight optics as I was changing back and forth. And that took a long time to do. For anyone from Holosun that might be watching, something that would be very, very helpful with this optic would be if you could go either direction through the progression and go to the reticle you needed or go back down to the two minute of angle dot or whatever, rather than having to cycle every time all the way through all the different reticles. Anyway, I digress. So those were the four reticles I decided to use for the exercise. I also decided to use the same drills that I used in my previous video where I was comparing the two different handguns. Three of the four drills take place from a distance of seven yards from the target, and they are controlled pairs starting from ready position, and I'm using my timer this time. So my timer is my signal to fire. On the signal to fire, I come up and fire a controlled pair from seven yards into the center of the target, the body of the target. And I'll explain the scoring of the target here momentarily. So the first drill is controlled pairs. I fire three of those with each reticle. Then I come back through and fire a failure drill. I fire two failure drills also from seven yards, which is two shots to the body and one shot to the head. I fire each of those with each reticle. Then I fire three rounds strong hand only into the body of the target using each reticle three rounds with my non-dominant hand only for each of the targets with each reticle. Then I go back to a distance of 15 yards because I wanted a longer range component in this test. Again, I start from a ready position and on the signal from my timer, I come up and fire three rounds into the body of the target. So I know that's kind of a long explanation and what I've decided to do with the range footage to save myself days and days worth of editing <laughs> is I'm going to show the split screen that I typically use for the first drill so everyone can see what it looks like. After that, me shooting always looks about the same. So what you'll see after that is the way that the shots struck the target. You'll only see the target view, you won't see me actually shooting. But again, I look pretty much the same as I always do when I'm shooting the drill. Now, when I shot the drills, I did not always shoot with the same progression of reticles. The first time through, I start with a two minute of angle dot, then I go to the eight minute of angle circle dot, 20 minute of angle circle dot, and 32 minute of angle circle dot. Then when I start the failure drills, I go the other way, 32 minutes and two, 20 and two, eight and two, and then just the two minute of angle dot. Then when I start the one hand only drills, once again, two, 20, uh, excuse me, two, eight, 20, and 32, all with a two minute of angle dot. So I'm, I'm reversing the way that I go so I never shoot these in the exact same order. That way, if there's any advantage to always starting with one reticle and always ending with the other, it's negated because the order always changes. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the target and I'll tell you about the scoring. For my target this time around, I wanted to use something different than I used in the last video. I wanted to use something that looked a little bit more human. If you saw the last video where I was comparing the two different handguns, you know that I used one that was sort of a modified IPSC looking target. It does have an anatomical drawing on it, which I like. But this time around, I wanted to use this target. 
and my scoring is going to be a little bit different. On the other target, you remember there were the different size squares, and I used each one of those for different point values. This time, I wanted to use actual anatomical features for those point values. So as I shoot my way through the drills, any shots that strike the heart or aorta are worth three points. Anything off the heart or aorta are worth two points, and I've made this line across the bottom of the lungs and across the top of the lungs, so this is the two-point area. Nothing outside of there is going to score two points. Anything outside of this area but on the body of the target score one point, and anything completely off the human silhouette scores zero points. For designated headshots, I've also modified the target here somewhat. I've said before I don't like this zone that's used on this particular target. I think it's too low. I think the idea behind this is to keep from having to shoot through the forehead, which is the most dense part of the skull, depending upon the individual. <laughs> but what I decided to do is add another scoring area here. So for designated headshots, anything that strikes the center brain area is worth three points. Anything outside the center brain area but inside of either one of these two circles is worth two points, and anything on the head but outside of the circles is worth one point. Again, anything that strikes completely off the head is worth zero. Any shots for either area on the target that break a line get the next higher score. So if something breaks the line of the heart and aorta, it gets three points. If something breaks the line of the lungs out here, that gets two points. Obviously the same thing up here. If it breaks the line, it gets the next higher point value. Another thing I decided to do to make this drill interesting was to use my Smith & Wesson M&P 40L. So this is chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge, meaning it's going to have a little bit more recoil and a little bit more muzzle rise, which is going to require a little bit more time and a little bit more effort to get my sight picture after I fire a shot and come back on target. So I thought that would be interesting too, since we're looking at these reticles, we're looking at practical accuracy, and I'm figuring in the time component this time, that will probably maximize the amount of movement that I'm going to get for each shot and require that much more effort to get back on and fire off my next shot. So hopefully that will help a little bit when it comes to trying to see whether or not I'm actually getting a benefit from the reticle or if I've just shot these drills so many times that I'm basically holding where I always hold and squeezing the trigger and the bullets are going where they always go. So I think that's everything that I need to tell you about to lay the groundwork for the drills. Now let's start to talk about the drills themselves. So as I mentioned, the first drill when I got out to the range yesterday, and by the way, we had a great day yesterday <laughs> weather-wise. Yesterday was February 1st, and for whatever reason, it warmed up to about 40 degrees. We had some rain last week, all the snow melted off the range, and it actually dried up some, so I was not up to my ankles in mud while I was out there. So beautiful day for shooting these drills. And I went out, set everything up, and as I said, the first drills that I started to fire were my controlled pairs. I started with the two minute of angle dot, again, starting in the ready position, and on the signal to fire for my timer, I came up and fired two shots into the body of the target as fast as I felt I could accurately place my shots. Now, this is important because my shot tempo throughout the entire drill is determined by how fast I think I can accurately fire my shots not how fast I can squeeze the trigger and just crank out rounds as fast as I can get them to come out at the end of the buzzle. So when I come up to shoot, I'm getting a sight picture each time that I squeeze the trigger. I'm not just cranking on the trigger. I, and I, I wanna point that out because these are drills intended for use with defensive handguns in actual defensive encounters. These are not drills that, or, or not, phases maybe of a competitive shooting event. In a competitive shooting event, if you come up and you're firing really fast and you miss a shot, that might cost you the match, but you're gonna feel bad maybe that day and that's about the worst thing that's gonna happen. If you come up in a defensive shooting situation and you start cranking off rounds as fast as you can squeeze the trigger and you have a miss, that could cost you dearly. 
So we can never spray and pray when it comes to defensive encounters, and each time that I'm shooting, I'm at least getting a flash sight picture before I start my trigger press. I just want to emphasize that at this point in the video. So what you're about to see are the controlled pairs, and as I said, two minute of angle dot first, then eight minute and two minute of angle dot, 20 minute of angle circle, two minute of angle dot, and 32 minute of angle circle and two minute of angle dot. The only time you're going to see me actually shooting is on the first one. After that, all you're going to see are the hits on the target. So here we go. Two point zero four seconds, two point zero four. Two point one three seconds, two point one three. And one point five four, one point fifty four. Okay, a couple of points about what you're seeing on the target board here behind me. First off, in order to get all of these to fit on the board so you would be able to see them at the same time for this comparison, I cut off everything except the scoring area. Also, to save myself some time, I went ahead and applied the stickers to the shot holes while I was out at the range yesterday. Normally, if you see these videos when I do them, I apply the stickers as I come back after showing each session out at the range and you see the new stickers on top. But for this video, I thought that was just going to take too long, and since you were able to see where the shots hit in the range footage, I thought I could get away with going ahead and applying all the stickers ahead of time. And I will tell you which color stickers went with which shots as I work my way through the explanation of all these drills. The targets that you see as I have them on the board here go from your right to your left. This is the two minute of angle dot only target. This is the eight minute of angle circle and two minute of dot target. This is the 20 and two target, and that is the 32 and two target all the way down on the end. The stickers that I use for the controlled pair drills that you just saw are the black stickers. And since they are the first ones that I applied, some of them are a little bit hard to see, but I'll go through and explain where each of them hit, and I'll talk more about the scoring later on. With the two minute of angle dot, I had three shots on the heart, that are well centered right here, two of them that broke the line of the heart right here. So those all received three points. And then I had a two point shot right here just below the heart. So overall the score for the two minute of angle dot only was 17 out of a possible 18 on those controlled pair drills. 
The time, however, was 5.71 seconds, which was the longest elapsed time. Now that time, by the way, is all three repetitions of that drill, the elapsed time for each one of those repetitions, that is, that are added together. The individual times were 2.04 seconds, 2.13 seconds, and 1.54 seconds, all of which adds up to 5.71 seconds, which was the longest total elapsed time of all of the reticles involved. So even though I got the highest degree of accuracy with that two minute of angle dot, it took the longest time to achieve that level of accuracy. Moving on to the eight and two target. There's one sticker here that's very hard to see. There's a black sticker that's almost completely covered up by that green one there, but they are one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I've got three shots on the heart, three shots off the heart, and that works out to a score of 15 out of 18 for the eight and two. The total elapsed time for the eight and two target was 5.21 seconds. So individually, 1.88, 1.57, and 1.76 for each of the three drills, which equals 5.21 when I add them all together. For the two and 20 or 20 and two target down here, I've got two shots that were well centered on the heart and four shots that are in the uh, two point area surrounding that. So that comes out to a score of 14. And this has a total elapsed time of 5.6 seconds, which individually were 2.03, 1.83, 1.74. And that is slightly slower than the eight and two target back here by about four tenths of a second, not quite. And not quite the degree of accuracy because the score is a little bit lower. And for whatever reason, the 20 minute of angle circle and two minute of angle dot and I just didn't get along. And you'll see that repeated as I go through the rest of the drills. Down on the far end with the 32 and two, I've got one, two shots on the heart and four shots just off the heart in the two point area. So again, that works out to 14, but my time was slightly faster with the, in fact, this was the fastest time of all with the 32 and two reticle, which was 4.65 seconds. So almost a full second faster with the, four, uh, the 32 and two reticle than with the 20 and two reticle. And again, that, that 20 and two reticle and I just didn't mesh real well. <laughs> so now let's go back out and we'll take a look at the failure drills. This is two shots to the body and one shot to the head. And we'll see how things went this time around.
For the failure drills, as I said earlier in the video, I started this time with the 32 and 2 reticle and worked my way back through the targets all the way down to the 2 minute of angle dot only. I used the red stickers to mark the shot holes for the failure drills, and starting with the 32 and 2 reticle, I've got two shots on the heart, two shots just off the heart into the two point lung area. I've got one two point shot to the head, and I've got one three point shot to the head all of which works out to a score of 15 out of 18 on this drill. The 32 and 2 reticle had a total lapse time of 5.02 seconds. Individually, each drill was 2.57 and 2.45 seconds respectively, and as I said, the overall time was 5.02. For the 2 and 20 reticle, I had a score of 13. There are two shots on the heart, one in the two-point area of the lung, and one out here in the one-point area. The two head shots are both in the two-point area. As I said, that comes out to a score of 13 out of 18, so not a very good score with that reticle that time around. In terms of time, the 2 and 20 reticle had a total elapsed time for both drills of 4.77 seconds, so it was measurably faster than I got with the larger reticle. Individually, they were 2.36 seconds and 2.41 seconds, but that accuracy is just not impressing me. And I'll say again, that reticle and I just did not get along. With the eight and two reticle, I had very good body shots. All four of those shots are on the heart. Both of the head shots landed in the two point area. So that's a score of 16 with the 8 and 2. The time with the 8 and 2 reticle overall was 5.05 seconds. Individually, they were 2.51, excuse me, 2.57 and 2.48 seconds. For the 2 minute of angle dot only, also all four of the body shots are on the heart and both of the head shots landed in a two point area. So again, that is a score of 16. The total lapse time was 5.6 seconds. So about five and a half tenths of a second slower than I achieved that same score with the eight and two reticle. And individually, they were 2.94 seconds and 2.66 seconds. So we continue to see very good accuracy with that two minute of angle dot only, but we also continue to see it taking longer and longer to get those shots on target. The larger reticles are much faster as we're seeing so far, but they're also, especially with the very large ones, starting to sacrifice some accuracy. So that does seem to be consistent to this point in the test. Now let's move on to the next drill, which is going to be one hand only drills. I'm going to start out the first time I'll fire three shots with my dominant hand only. The second time I'll fire three shots with my non-dominant hand only. And let's go see how this went. Thirty-six. 
For the one hand only drills, I again kick things off with the two minute of angle dot and I mark these shot holes with the green stickers. And I've got two shots that are well placed on the heart. This one just broke the line of the aorta. So there are three three point shots there. And I've got three two point shots, which comes out to a score of 15. Time wise, I had 3.31 seconds for my dominant hand and 3.98 seconds for my non dominant hand which comes out to a total elapsed time of 7.29 seconds. For the eight and two reticle, I again have three shots on the heart and three shots in the two point area, which again comes out to a score of 15. In terms of time, my dominant hand required 3.33 seconds and my non-dominant hand required 4.03 seconds for a total elapsed time of 7.36 seconds. Now this time around, this was slightly slower than the two minute of angle only dot. But when you start using non-dominant hand only and the pistol is moving around some, it's probably going to skew that time just a little bit because sometimes things just don't line up right. Moving on to the two and 20 target, I've got four shots. This was one time that the two and 20 and I did get along. Four shots on the heart, two shots in the two point area for a score of 16. With the two and 20 reticle, in terms of time, I had 2.87 seconds required for my dominant hand and 3.36 seconds required for my non-dominant hand for a total elapsed time of 6.23 seconds. And lastly, all the way down here, <laughs> this was one that just things went well with that 32 and two reticle. I've got five out of the six shots on the heart, one of them in the two point area. So 17 out of 18 on my one hand only drill with the 32 and two reticle. I fired the dominant hand only in 2.33 seconds, non-dominant hand in 4.44 seconds. And there was a noticeable delay. I, I don't remember if it was the second or third shot with my non-dominant hand where I completely lost the reticle for an instant and had to reacquire it before I could start my trigger press. And that really slowed that down. Otherwise, that was a pretty good drill and I'm pretty happy with the accuracy on that one. Last up is a drill where I move back to a distance of 15 yards and from 15 yards starting in the ready position on the signal to fire, I came up and fired three rounds into the body of each target. And here's what that looked like. From 15 yards, I again started with the 32 and two reticle. And I marked these shot holes with the gray stickers. I hope these are going to show up. Uh, I was running out of colors out there and this was just the next one I had to use. But from that distance of 15 yards, I have two shots on the heart, one in the two point area. So I have a total of eight points for the 32 and two reticle on that drill with an elapsed time of 4.16 seconds. So 4.16 from 15 yards. With the two and 20 reticle, 
I've got one shot on the heart and two shots in the two point scoring area. So I ended up with a score there of six points for the two and 20. For the eight and two, all three shots are down here in the two point area. And I might've been rushing those shots a little bit coming off the two larger reticles. Maybe I was trying to shoot a little bit too fast and I pulled those shots a little bit low. So that comes out to a score of six points. And for the two minute of angle only dot, I've got two shots on the heart and one just off for a total of eight points. Time for the two minute of angle dot only was 4.36. And I don't know if I said it before, so uh, 4.36, 3.27 for the eight and two, 3.29 for the two and 20, and 4.16, as I said, for the 32 and two. So now that's all the shooting, all the drills are done. Let's see if I learned anything through all of this. So in determining a winner for these four different types of reticles, I had to come up with a way to objectively compare the results of each with each other. And what I decided to do was use the overall score that I achieved with each reticle and then subtract from that the overall time used for each reticle. So I added all the times for all the drills together to come out with a total elapsed time. And then I subtracted that amount from that reticle score. There was a total score for all of these 16 drills, or actually for all four drills, each reticle had a total possible score of 63 points. If I would have shot a three point shot with each individual shot, there was a total of 63 points. Respectively, the two minute of angle dot only had a final score of 56 points. The eight and two reticle had a total score of 52 points. The 20 and two reticle had a score of 50 points and the 32 and two had a total score of 54 points. So the two minute of angle dot did have the highest score of 56 points, but it also had the greatest total lapse time of 22.96 seconds. So when we subtract 22.96 from the score of 56, we get a score of 33.04. With the eight and two reticle, there was a total score, as I said, of 52 points, a total lapse time of 20.91 seconds. So that works out to 31.09, which was the final score for that reticle. For the 20 and two reticle, there was a total score of 50 points. That was the lowest score of all four reticles. And I'm not sure why, I don't, I don't know why that one just didn't work well for me. And this could be a situation too, where everyone is gonna to have to do some experimentation and figure out exactly what reticle is going to work best for you. But the score for the 20 and two reticle was 50. As I said, the total elapsed time was 19.87 seconds. So that was actually the shortest total elapsed time. The score worked out to 30.13, which actually scores it the lowest of all four. And for the largest reticle, the 32 and two, there was a total score of 54. So only two points behind the two minute of angle only dot with a total elapsed time of 20.6, which was the second fastest. And that gives it a score of 33.4. So it actually scored the highest of all four reticles. Now, here's what I'm getting from all of this. Basically at seven yards and closer, we're looking at across the room type distances, or at least not greater than across the room distances. And then I added the final stage with the 15 yard shooting for the odd situation where someone might have to take a long range shot for whatever reason. And I would say in a civilian defensive situation, 15 yards would be a pretty long shot. And even so on that 15 yard shot, I still had two of my three shots on the heart with that large reticle. And the third shot was an acceptable lung shot. 
which was almost identical to the results. In fact, it was identical to the results that I got with the two minute of angle dot only, but it took longer to achieve this level of accuracy, which was the exact same thing that we saw all the way through. So what I'm drawing from all of this as a conclusion is that at what I'll call typical defensive distances at across the room distances, if you will, the large reticle is really giving you the best combination of speed and accuracy. It's the fastest to allow very good levels of accuracy. And I think part of the reason is because I come up, I find it very quickly, I'm able to place it quickly on my target and start my trigger press, and the bullets just generally go where I want them to go. Now, I want to emphasize this is at relatively close distances. For you police officers out there, for you folks in the military who might have to concern yourself with longer range shooting, I think I'm going to repeat this at some longer distances and see how this changes, if at all, when we start looking at 15 yards and further, 25 yards, maybe 40 yards, something like that. The, the really longer range handgun shots. And we'll start to see if those smaller reticles start to have a significant accuracy advantage at those distances. But that's gonna be a subject for a future video. This was enough work for this one. <laughs> In any case, folks, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you got something out of it if you stuck with me the whole way through. If you have any questions or comments about this video, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you purchase anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it'll save you 7% off your purchase from Optics Planet. Also, remember the discount code for House of Pain, either House of Pain Armament or House of Pain Munitions. For either one, you can use my discount code, which is HRFUNK10, and that'll save you some money off your purchase from House of Pain. And don't forget the target sponsor for the channel, folks. And this was one of their targets that I was using today, and also their stickers. <laughs> Go to Targets Online, check out their inventory, and see if they have anything that's going to meet your target needs. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.